hear the story of the Ambrose brothers, how one succeeded and the other faded away, and how one learned to understand acting on the system while the other kept fighting fires. We join Mark and John Ambrose at a family dinner as they set out on their careers. See you at the top. Race you there. The years pass by and the brothers' companies go from strength to strength. They grow fast and collect a cabinet full of awards. After several years, they can buy fine homes and enjoy great holidays. After a while, things seem to get much harder. Customers complained more, staff grumbled and profits fell. Last year, the staff party was cancelled. We rejoined John and Mark at a family dinner. What's the matter, boys? It's really tough out there. Come on, boys, you can fix this. You're right. Come on, John. The brothers went back to their companies, determined to please their customers, cheer up their staff and start making money again. But they went about it in very different ways. Mark launched his new INC strategy to great fanfare, incentivize, reorganize, offshore, new IT and cuts. The staff called the program ironic. John realized that despite his company's past successes, he needed a new level of thinking to solve and avoid the problems they'd created. So John, his management team and staff took the time to learn how to use a more successful and evidence-based approach to management. Even if some of the ideas were counterintuitive, they made quick progress. There was no big launch, but John and the senior team spent a lot more of their time on the shop floor, understanding problems, challenging the team to solve them and focusing on quality. John brought in specialist help because, as Deming says, a system cannot understand itself. This helped the managers to become better at working on the whole system end-to-end -end and at leading change. John's plan focused on improving quality first. They learned as a team regardless of status and they started small. As they learned by doing, things got better. They reinvested early savings into going after tougher problems. They kept learning and they kept improving. There were some new things to learn and many old things to unlearn. They learned how to manage variation and use it to improve control. They improved the match between human nature and how the work was organized. They broke the limits on their existing thinking, which opened up previously unseen avenues. Instead of focusing on silos and arbitrary goals, they treated the organization as a whole system. As a result, customers got better service profits improved and the staff were happier too. One year later, back at the dinner table, Hey Mark, how's it going? Fine. Yeah, fine. What about you? Well, it's been tougher than we thought, but now people focus on the customer first and we've hardly got any complaints now. My managers are getting skilled at solving the root of problems and have the respect to their teams. Our processes are simpler, easier to train and our IT does what we need. Reinvestment is paying off and profits have jumped considerably. There's no way I could do that. My people just aren't good enough. They are. They just need to learn what we've learned. So Mark faced a choice. Keep firefighting, sell up and move on, or learn a new way of managing. Meanwhile, John looked to expand because he knew he could use the learning to do it all again, and this time it would be easier. If you want to know more about learning the same proven scientific approaches to get similar lasting results, then please get in touch.